Welcome to Zoocast UK, filled with news, views and information about UK zoos, safari parks, aquariums and other animal parks. I'm Jenny. I'm Julie, and we'll be looking at all aspects of UK zoos. The animals they care for on site, those they can serve in the wild, how they got started, and their hopes for the future. Our first story this time is about a miracle gorilla at Bristol Zoo, who has just celebrated her second birthday. Athia was born by emergency caesarean section in February 2016 after her mother, Kira, showed symptoms of potentially life-threatening preeclampsia. The operation was carried out by consultant surgeons from Bristol University, along with the zoo's own vet team. Little Athia weighed just over one kilogram when she was born, and being a few weeks premature, she needed help breathing. It was the first time a gorilla had been born by caesarean at Bristol Zoo, and one of only a handful of instances worldwide. Afia, which means Friday-born child in Guardian, had to be hand-reared as her mum, Kira, was too ill to take care of her. Keepers fed her milk from a bottle every two hours, day and night, and took it in turns to take her home each evening. As she grew up, keepers had to teach her natural gorilla behaviours. Their hard work and dedication paid off as Afia flourished. When Kira recovered from the surgery and subsequent illness, she showed no maternal interest towards Afia. However, the zoo's most dominant female, Romina, was very interested and would often spend a long time alongside Afia whilst keepers cared for her. In time, Romina was introduced to Afia and became her surrogate mum. It's expected that Afia will remain with Romina until she is almost five, learning and receiving care from her until she reaches an independent age. She will then stay in the zoo's gorilla troop until she reaches sexual maturity. Curator of mammals, Lindsay Bug, said Afia really is our little miracle. She came through against all the odds and is growing up into a strong and healthy gorilla. Western lowland gorillas are listed as critically endangered on the International Union for Conservation of Nature's Red List of Threatened Species. On to more Bristol Zoo babies now, with the successful hatching of three Kia chicks. Their births will help safeguard the population of these endangered birds. The Kia was voted Bird of the Year in their native New Zealand in 2017, and Bristol Zoo has seven of them. Kias are endangered mainly because they nest on the ground and are preyed upon by possums, cats and stoats that people introduced to New Zealand. But they have also been victim to hunters, which has reduced their numbers dramatically. Some 150,000 birds were shot between 1860 and 1970. Their population is now estimated at somewhere between 1,000 and 3,000. Kias are inquisitive birds, especially where people are concerned, and they're widely regarded as the only true alpine parrot and were given their name by the Maori, indigenous Polynesian people of New Zealand, for the sound of their call. Bristol Zoo, which is the fifth oldest in the world, has been successful in breeding Kias for decades. The current hatchling sex is not yet known, and for now they are safe in the nest, although they are expected to fledge in the coming weeks. Conservation is a high priority at Bristol Zoo, and earlier this month, three of their conservationists flew to Africa to carry out vital research into vulnerable giraffes. Dr. Gronya McCabe, the Society's Head of Field Conservation and Science, Osiris Doombe, Conservation Lecturer, and Will Walker, Animal Manager at Wild Place Project, which is owned by Bristol Zoological Society, are travelling to Cameroon to spend more than three weeks in Bainaway National Park. Here's Gronya to tell you more. So we will be doing a diet study. So we'll be going out to find the animals and then to look a little bit more closely at what they're actually eating during the day. And then spending a bit of time setting up some camera traps, which we will use throughout the park to be able to understand their distribution within the area. And also to be able to start to recognize individuals. So each individual giraffe has a unique spot pattern. And if we can capture lots of images of those spot patterns, then we can start to build up a database of the different animals that are there and get to know the individuals a bit better. Well, if we can understand which individuals are there, we can get a better idea of how many there are in total. And also we can start to track their life history. So over time we can see how one individual uh, might reproduce if it's a female or how they're aging, whether or not we stop seeing them, which might be an indication that they've moved out of the area or per potentially been hunted. So it can help us to really track what's going on with each individual, which helps us to better understand the population dynamics. Very little or very few studies have actually been done on them over the years. Um, which is part of the reason why we didn't realize until very, very recently that they were undergoing this silent extinction and actually um, their numbers were dropping quite significantly. We will use the population numbers uh, uh, in an effort to create an action plan, a, a national action plan for the Cordofan giraffe in Cameroon. 
and we're also working very closely with three other national parks in the northern uh, part of the country that also have Cordofan giraffe and then we'll start to better understand what's going on with the population dynamics as a whole and implement management strategies to better protect them. Fascinating. Let's hope that all their work does lead to a National Conservation Action Plan to help safeguard the future of giraffes in Cameroon. The use of drones means the survey can continue after they return home. And on the subject of giraffe, the all-girl group at ZSL London Zoo received a Valentine's Day treat of juicy flowers entwined in a heart-shaped wreath. Well, all girls love to receive a bunch of flowers, although this is a bit of fun. It's also part of enrichment to keep the giraffes happy. And according to keeper Louise Jacobson, they used their dexterous elongated tongues to tug the pretty petals of the heart-shaped wreath in a matter of moments, just like when they tug vegetation and flowers off the very tops of trees to eat. And from a celebration of Valentine's Day to a birthday. Keepers at West Midland Safari Park celebrated the 16th birthday of their eldest ring-tailed lemur, Irish, with a birthday cake made of crushed leaf eater pellets, garnished with apple sticks and decorated with chopped carrots in the shape of a 16. To complete the celebrations, the lemurs were gifted with colourful presents filled with tasty treats. The family party for Irish included his four sons, Bilbo, Bakari, Banafu and Caesar. Jen Albert, lemur keeper, said, As keepers, it is great to see Irish reach a milestone age of 16. He has an important role in the group, being the dad, and helps keep everyone in line. Well, he tries to. He loves nothing better than having a sunbathe, curling up with his family and munching on his favourite treat, grapes. She continued, Breeding programmes are essential in helping to conserve species such as lemurs, as 95% of all lemur species are currently endangered in the wild. Irish has therefore played an important role as our breeding male. We all look forward to seeing him enjoy his twilight years here at West Midlands Safari Park. Lemurs are amongst the most endangered mammals in the world and face continued threats to their habitat in their native home of Madagascar. Irish first came to the safari park seven years ago and was born at Belfast Zoo, which is why he is aptly named. Since being at the park, he has fathered a total of 20 baby lemurs, which is great news for this endangered species. Although he's the oldest ringtail lemur at the park, lemurs can live between 20 and 30 years in captivity. Now at the grand age of 16, Irish will be taking a well-earned rest and keeping an eye on the younger, more mischievous members of the troop. Even more mischievous youngsters now. Chester Zoo's painted dog pups have been named. The seven playful puppies who were born two months ago to mum Kamana were each given African-inspired names after the zoo's carnivore keepers confirmed the new litter comprises of three boys and four girls. The trio of males, Bakura, Kendi and Hassani, and quartet of females, Mosi, Nuru, Iyasi and Bahati, are the first of their kind to be bred at the zoo. Their arrival marks a significant boost to the international breeding programme, which is working to try and boost numbers of the endangered species, as conservationists fear as few as 1,500 breeding dogs now remain across Africa. African painted dogs take their name from their irregular mottled coat, which features patches of yellow, black, brown and white fur. No two dogs have exactly the same markings, which is useful for trying to identify different pack members in the wild, and just as helpful to the zoo's keepers who chose the names for the four sisters and three brothers. Dave Hall, team manager of carnivores at the zoo, said, It's fascinating to watch the pups play and the family dynamic of the pack develop. The adult dogs are very protective of the youngsters, and Dadville is extremely attentive to them. From the start, he took food into the den for Kamana when she was suckling the pups and now he's doing his bit to discipline them and police how much they're all eating. As they grow in size, they grow in confidence. The family dynamic is different every day and it's great to see some strong bonds forming between the individuals. The African painted dog is one of the world's most endangered carnivores and is facing a real struggle for survival. They're listed as endangered by the IUCN. Visit actforwildlife.org.uk for more information. Thank you for watching Zoocast UK and don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.